The Rube Goldberg video, much like Source Makes Me Cry, is an idea that I've wanted to do for a long time but have put off because, well, it seemed hard. And just like the Source Makes Me Cry video, it ended up being one of my best and most fun to work on. What finally got me to do it was a proper Rube Goldberg example that showed up on Reddit, involving marbles that rolled down a very slight slope. This last bit is important, since I know that Source's physics have been nerfed since release to the point where they glitch out the moment things start getting fun. The idea of a few marbles on a slope sounded within its capabilities, so I got to work on one of my own. And then I quickly went and did a proper one once I realised how boring the slope idea was to watch when done on a large scale. I kept telling myself that this was just a test, that it hasn't been done before in Source, to my knowledge, and therefore expectations of what is possible aren't exactly high with it. Everything you see in the video was made with the intention of being just a test to find out what was possible with the engine, and if it was possible, I could flesh out the video into a more complete idea for a sequel. There, two videos from one idea. That goes a long way over on Two Clicks Philip. But then I thought, well, if I do a making of as well, then I could get three videos out of it, which is more iterations than anything Valve will ever make. I win. But as it progressed, I grew increasingly proud of my creation and began to get ideas for the visuals and sound. At the time, I thought that having bassy, dreamy music playing would be super original and clever, but with hindsight, it was probably just from another top Reddit post that I saw at about the same sort of time as the Marble video. I don't care. Combining weird stuff is as good as making something brand new, in my opinion. I'm very happy with how it turned out. While I feel my audio quality has improved over the years, I have also improved on how bad I can make it sound. For that 2006 going low in CSGO episode, I recorded with the microphone a long way away from me, when actually a few tweaks in Audacity would have gotten a more authentic, muffled sound. This improved from my YouTube Through the Ages video later that year, where I reduced the bitrate and tweaked the bass and such. And now, finally, Audacity has come to the rescue again, and I used it to add fake echo, reverb, and to overdo the bass to make the music sound like it's coming from a distance. I don't know why there are invisible speakers all over this mountain, but I feel the effect works and truly adds to the video's atmosphere. I also had to splice a load of impact sounds from where they failed to originally play in the recording, and then added echoes to all of those as well. Source has never sounded better. Or worse. All the moving stuff is made out of fizz boxes. This is a feature in Source that I am eternally grateful to them for including, since I don't think they needed to. Probably caused a fair few problems to implement. And yet, out of that simple idea I've made Smash Maps, DMM, How Will He Die, and now this video. So thank you Val for whoever bothered to code this feature into Half-Life 2 in the first place. I only hope that your future plans involve fleshing it out further, because I will want to make full use of it. The question with a video like this is, where do you draw the line? What do I consider fair, and what is cheating? A few of the physics things would fall over before they were meant to, so I made some start motion disabled until touched by something else. The ball at the end has an instant kill zone around it for comedic purposes, and I used invisible hinges to hold the seesaws in place and to make blocks spin on the spot, as a fizz box in this situation just wouldn't work very well without the equivalent of lubricant of some kind. Source, if you will. But regardless, this contraption would be possible to get working in real life, so I'm cool with it. After all the effort that went into the bog of this video, I decided it would have been a missed opportunity to not have something at the start and finish as well, even though by this point I was getting impatient and just wanted the world to see this video. The whole Indiana Jones zoom out intro nicely mirrors the start of the other Source video, and starts the video off a lot better than simply seeing a boulder start moving for no apparent reason. And the ending? Well, it's CSGO. You've got to have somebody dying. I originally wanted something sillier at the end, by lots of heavy objects missing the guy only for the tiniest pebble to eventually kill him, but couldn't be bothered to work out how to do that, so instead moved on to a ball rolling up to him and sending him flying. I initially had the music stop before the death to make the ending feel really Monty Python-esque, anticlimactic, contrasting with the elaborate journey up to that point. But then my friend, Cat of War, suggested that I should use the CSGO music at some point, so I put it in at the end and made it more dramatic to suit the theme. The reference to my earlier Source video came about early on as well, but I very nearly didn't add the Power by Source intro at all. I was ready to release the video, and then thought it made complete sense to include it as well, and had to wait another two hours as I re-rendered and re-uploaded. I also wanted to do this whole video in one take, and this is where all the challenges arose. Because you don't get all this working first time. When testing, I split it up into smaller chunks that I didn't have to watch through it all every time I made a change, of which I made hundreds. There are natural breaks that a Rube Goldberg machine has, some bits are powered by momentum, while other bits require a slight nudge to get moving. 
So in testing, I chose mid-start points that mimicked how the thing as a whole would behave at that point. Now you'd hope that, being a computer simulation, it would behave the same every time. Well, Source doesn't. A lot of the time it would fail for no good reason, so I had to test each change a number of times to see if it was feasible, and then made adjustments to make it as reliable as possible. This block here would sometimes fly way too far, and other times not at all. The dominoes would randomly fall so it had to be frozen in place. These three boulders here were perhaps the most challenging. So many things went wrong. Bulls would escape over the sides, sometimes they'd bounce and stop the ones behind them in their tracks. In one take, one of the stone ones even managed to swap places with the wooden one, which meant that it sunk in the water in the next part and couldn't activate the dominoes in the first place. This DMM wall here was originally much better, but the source engine would bug out and crash, so sadly I had to break it on impact. Valve, please fix. I had to add some walls to the top part of the map because otherwise boulders from early on would tumble down and preemptively trigger later bits. I swear, some of the problems I had were so simple yet unexpected I couldn't help but be impressed. Then these cogs decided to stop working for no good reason and I had to reposition them all to get them spinning again. This top bit here used to start the other way up and would freefall, spinning 180 degrees before riding the beam down. But of course, that also broke for no reason and I had to settle for a less dramatic but far more consistent alternative instead. In fact, come to think of it, it all broke again for the one take version. But I enjoyed every minute of it and soon it was 5 in the morning and I even had a perfect recording to start on the next day. That's right. It didn't just work, it looked like it knew what it was doing for this take. And once I had the Source TV recording of it, I didn't have to sit through another run of it ever again. Apart from for this video, of course. For anybody who's recorded in Source, you'll know that recording flybys is no easy task. You choose the times and locations of the camera shots, and then Source does its best to fly through as many walls as possible, stuttering all the way. The key to a smooth recording is the highest frame rate possible whilst capturing it. So I captured the flawless run in 640x480 in the first place that it didn't drop a single tick. When choosing the camera locations, I followed up each quick movement bit with another keyframe a second or so after to stop it from wildly flying off too far in random directions. But as a result, the changes in speed are often noticeable. It's the best I can hope for with the Source engine in its current state, and I got it right second time. When capturing the video footage of this, I ran the recording at 1 16th speed. That means the run took half an hour to complete. All the while I was recording 4K 60fps. I could then speed it up to blur it all together, which is why the whole thing looks so smooth in playback. It's as smooth as 1000fps. I said in the making of Source Makes Me Cry that I got lucky and that there wasn't much to learn from the experience, but I've changed my mind. Honestly, most of my videos are a chore to make. This is simply because I've done them all before. I mean, they serve a purpose. They're the ones that earn me the money and push up my view time that the YouTube algorithms value so much. But videos like this? This is what I enjoy making. I get to try something new. To solve problems and to venture into unexplored territory. I'm so used to tried and tested methods of video making that I've forgotten what it's like to jump in the deep end. A video like this is scary and challenging, but it brings back the feeling I got when I first started YouTube. This project has been a real adventure, and I'm left with something I'm genuinely proud of that I can re-watch countless times and I'm actually excited to see what you guys think of it as well. It's refreshing, and I can't wait to do more.